Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Press Play Lifestyle Inspired Podcast, where we do interviews with interesting and inspiring people to help you, our listeners, find the resources, tools, and support they need to be their best inspired self. I'd like to introduce to you Miss Carla, former Colonel, and she could tell you a little bit about herself. Hi, Carla. How are you doing today? Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm fine, thank you. I appreciate the, oppor appreciate the opportunity to address your audience here. I've, uh, I've had an amazing life. I, um, I, I completed 30 years active duty in the Air Force. I, I achieved the rank of Colonel. I was one of the, the few women of my generation to, to achieve that rank. And, um, and then I've worked another 13 years for the federal government. But the reason that that uh, brings me to you today, though, is that I also wrote a book. It's called Right to Influence. And one of the, the primary uh, reasons for my success was being able to leverage the written word. And, uh, and that's what I wanted to share with your audience to help them in their various job occupations. Wonderful. I think that's a great opportunity. We've had um, quite a few authors in on the show before, but I would have to say uh, you're definitely unique in that you have um, military background, female military background, uh, as well as kind of going through the ranks quite a bit. So what led you to decide to write a book? Like how, how does that all of a sudden just come about? I had my own life changing experience. When I was a Lieutenant Colonel in Hawaii, I was a squadron commander. And what that means is I was responsible for a unit of 480 super talented men and women. When I arrived there, it was the most losing unit in the state for statewide quarterly and professional awards. The unit was almost a laughing stock. They were always beaten despite the fact that they were doing amazing work. What I realized immediately is the reason that they were losing is because the, the supervisors who were submitting the nomination packages couldn't write. So you could be the most brilliant captain, lieutenant, or staff sergeant doing more than what was expected of you. But if your boss couldn't tell your story, you lose. Uh, so that was hurting members' career progression. It was hurting their families. You know, you don't get promoted. You don't get the increased paycheck. You can't send kids to college. So I had to fix it. So I took three days personal vacation. I sequestered myself in a beach ca uh, cabin, and I analyzed my own writing. Out of that came uh, word sculpting, which is part two of my book today. But I turned that into a small handbook. I taught my guys how to write, and we started sweeping the awards. And like almost overnight, once they learned how to tell the stories, we were there. Then the other units came and asked if I could teach them too. Well, the answer is okay. I lost my competitive edge, but sure. Well, I ended up teaching my writing methodology for the next 15 years to thousands of Air Force people. So this was in my soul, the, the battle cry that I developed from that experience is true today. It's powerful writing changes lives. You could be the, the most qualified for whatever that competitive opportunity is, but if somebody else tells a better story, guess who wins and it's not you. So when I retired, I had this thing in my soul You still there, Carla? I heard you say when I retired, I had this thing in my soul. Wouldn't have. Yeah. So that's why that's why I wrote the book. And then and the, the first edition came out in 2017. And then I taught workshops. I still teach multiple uh, types of audiences. And I ended up developing so much uh, new material for writing grants, for elevator speeches, college application essays, and, and on and on that I cranked all of that into the second edition, which has 70 more pages than the first edition. And so, you know, I, I continue. Thank you notes for post job interviews. They're just, there's so many applications for being able to write powerfully and so many opportunities that open or don't depending on how you pitch the message. That's a long answer to a short, uh, short question, I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. That's why we're here to get your insights. 
So if someone only had an opportunity to learn one of the powerful influential lighting techniques that you have, which one would you guide them to without having like knowing what their needs are, what kind of background they have or anything like that? I'd say, uh, and that, that, that's a tough question. The overall category, I call it bureaucratic blather because that's where you, you smother your message and you lose the reader instantly. So the number one word sculpting tool, because there's tools and strategies, the number one word sculpting tool is, is useless words. And the reason I call it word sculpting is after you've got your initial draft, that's like a sculptor looking at a six foot chunk of marble, you go through it sentence by sentence and you break out your little word sculpting tool. In this case, it's look for useless words. It's like a scavenger hunt. Every single word in every single sentence needs to convey the meaning. If there's some word that doesn't contribute, you need to delete it. That tightens the message and it saves space. Yeah, so it sounds uh, like- And, you, and um, I'm gonna throw a second one at you, verb. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, so it sounds like you, you, before it was popular, kind of came up with the technique to get it above the fold, right? They talk about making sure your message for executives is brief enough that they could see it at the top of the scroll in their, in their computer screens. And uh, it sounds like that you kind of did that before computer screens were, were a necessity in the workplace. Yeah, well, let, let, yes, uh, let me explain really quickly the, my writing methodology. If you imagine an inverted triangle, the, the top part of that inverted triangle is where you need to strategize your message. That's where the above the fold comes in. You want to make sure that the, if you've only got 30 seconds of the reader's time, what's the most important message to convey? That goes at the very top and then the, all the other ancillary and backup information comes down. So strategizing the message and there's all sorts of hints as to here's how you strategize. Uh, that's part one of the book. The bottom part of the triangle, the pointy part, is where you break out those 10 word sculpting techniques. So first you have to strategize the message, figure out what's the most important, what's the second most important, and then you get down and you start word sculpting it. Um, uh, another, another one of those word sculpting tools that people really do need to work on it's, is verbs. If you can imagine um, a hard boiled egg, you, you got it, hard boiled mm -hmm. egg? Yep. Okay, now make that sucker six foot tall and focus on the yolk. The yolk is the verb. The white is all the stuff that we use to suffocate the verbs and that generates convoluted writing. So for example, uh, reduce the amount of time equals expedite. Demonstrate the validity is validate. Provide protection is protect. You see, mm -hmm. uh, keep separated is separate. Place an emphasis on is emphasize. So that's the, a, a couple examples of the verb. Think about the hard boiled egg, throw away the white and just go straight for that yolk. And, th and that's an example of how you tighten up the writing so that you don't suffocate the message and, and bore the reader. Yeah, what's interesting about that is uh, when I was in my undergraduate, I had a English writing and computer science degree. And they teach us in school to basically fill the page up with useless words because they kind of say, you know, write a 50 page paper on something. So we're not always trying to find the 50 pages of the most relevant information. We're just trying to fill up 50 pages. Um, so it's like we've learned the opposite and, way and of that, what was best. That, oh, exactly. And unfortunately, that's the same thing that's being taught in current academia. No ding on the teachers. I love teachers, but, but students in high school and college and even in grad school are developing the wrong muscles. They're, they're learning how to write fat. So if, if there's a, a, a word limit, write a 5,000 word paper, people instinctively think, well, a little bit of meat, lots of fat, and I, and I make the grade. The problem is when you come out into the work environment, it's the exact opposite. The, uh, another philosophy that I explain to everybody, regardless of, and you understand this because we are on the receiving end of this kind of communication too. Every author is restricted by two things. You're restricted by the reader's time 
tick, 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 we are all busy. And you're also restricted by space. And this is where the above the fold comes in. Or if, you, if there's a, a, a space and a, a demarcated space on a government form where you physically have only X number of inches to make your, to make your, your point. Uh, word limitations. Tell me about your book in 25 words. Tell me what you can do in 100 spaces. So authors are constrained by time and space. And, and the individual who best leverages that, who knows how to strategize and get rid of all of those excess words, wins. Because time and space are golden. That's amazing. I appreciate uh, the insight very much. So if someone were trying to improve their influence through writing, um, and you've already kind of taught us like the upside down triangle, uh, like the higher level strategy, do you, you know, do you work with people one on one or do you tend to just do you refer them to your book or what would be the process of someone becoming a better and more influential writer? I, I will do. Yep, I, I teach workshops uh, before this COVID-19 thing hit. I, I adore doing that in person, but like everybody else, I've had to, uh, to trans transfer that to web-based seminars. So I, I teach groups. Um, I do individual counseling. I've, I just recently, quite honestly, started that. I, uh, um, and I, I tailor the program based on that particular agency or that particular person's products. So for example, there is a, uh, uh, a lobbying firm in DC that I, I helped one of the individuals there. They provided me uh, copies of, uh, of their products that needed improvement. So I applied my writing techniques to those as the templates and then using their own products taught them how to compose them better. Um, all of this is, uh, is also available in the book. But the, uh, the applications, it, it applies to resumes, to those post-interview thank you notes, um, grant submissions. It applies to so many things. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, it's, it's even more important now, right, with everyone sort of being at home, that if you're not doing a lot of Skype interaction, most of your interaction might be through right, your, the written word. And so being more precise. Well, exactly. Is, it seems like a like very important thing to do. So if anyone was interested in now, learning, for, go ahead. Uh, so, I'm sorry. I was uh, going to say that for people who are at home and who might have extra time, not those, those parents who are mm -hmm. challenged with school-aged children, my heart goes out to them too. If you do happen to have time, the, uh, the book contains 200 exercises with, and I do it in the format of before, after, and analysis. So, you know, here's the messed up writing. Your turn. I've given you all the techniques in the first part of the, the book. Your turn to, to try it. Here's the before. You try and fix the after, and then the analysis shows you how that transformation, how the metamorphosis actually occurs. So for those who have time, this might be a really great opportunity to actually start developing those muscles so that when the world does reawaken, you're better positioned. Absolutely. That, that sounds like a, uh, one of the things that I, I appreciate about that is um, I have learned a lot of things over the years and gone to a lot of courses, et cetera. And many people just barf the information out at you, but I'm a firm believer that if you don't do something with it or implement it or practice it, then the likelihood of you being able to utilize it effectively is, is very, very small. So um, it's like a workshop and a book mm -hmm. then, essentially. Exactly. Awesome. You know, my, what I wanted to accomplish was if, if I've been given a gift, it, it's a gift, I stink at math, but for some reason I can write, I can strategize a message. And I wanted to leave that with as many people as possible. So if I get hit by that truck tomorrow, I will know that I've done everything I possibly can to share this with as many people as possible because it really does open doors to opportunities. You know, something else folks sometimes don't think about is strategy, you know, strategizing the message when you go in for a job interview. It's like a chess match. It's you versus the interviewer. So what you ought to do is before you even set foot in that uh, in that office is 
have already in your hip pocket three short messages that you want to leave or you want to weave into that interview and then manipulate the conversation so you can drop those three gems and also have in your hip pocket what's the final echo that you want to have resonate as you walk out the door. Think these things through instead of just walking in and passively reacting to the questions that the inter interviewer poses. You can actually control the situation. And that same thing applies for the, the post-interview thank you note. One, write one, do it the next mm -hmm. day. Uh, and uh, um, strategize this too. The, the purpose of the thank you note well, the thank you note is actually is like a silver platter. It's an opportunity to make one more impression. So uh, reference from that interview, uh, one key thought, one key capability or skill or something that makes you so special that you want to reinforce from the interview. And if there were any uh, personal connections that you made with the interviewer, him or herself, you all went to the same college, you've got the same hobby, mention that in that thank you letter also because that helps the individual remember who you were because you may be one of, I don't know, 30, 40 or 50 candidates who actually were interviewed for that job. So that's a kind of a subtle reminder um, of, of who you were and what you brought to the table. Uh, so, it, you know, it, it it's just thinking your way through these things so that you're not so passively reacting. Yeah, I think it sounds like it's just being so much more intentional with what your what your message is and versus sort of just re, like you said, reacting through the day. Um, how many mm -hmm. you know airmen and women or or others in your life would you say you've been able to um, educate both through that or through your book, your workshop on more effective ways to write influentially? Uh, you know, it, it's drop drop a pebble in a in a pond and watch the ripples. Uh, yeah. The answer is I have no way of knowing. And and here here's an example. Um, when I, I was a group commander up at National Security Agency, that meant I had two thousand eight hundred people um, for whom I was responsible. Uh, so. Fast forward by 15 years, um, an individual shared with me on LinkedIn a photograph from a magazine, uh, you know, an, an open magazine that was that was that was imaged. The image was a, a young airman on a stage receiving an award. Uh, the person who was presenting the award was me. Well, you know, I've been doing this for so long. At that point, I didn't remember. It turns out that, that that young woman kept that photograph on her desk and she's now the CEO of a defense company. So awesome. one never knows. There's just no way to know how many, how many lives that you've touched. Um, there's a, uh, you know, the people whom I taught, they went out and, and taught um, and you, 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 just, you just don't know. That's wonderful. Which is so, what keeps me going. That's, that's the wind behind my sails. I can imagine it must feel great to kind of get some of that validation that the kind of the purpose that you were set out to do is having this wonderful impact across to people you didn't even realize, right, that you were impacting. That's just amazing. It is. It, it, it brings goosebumps. That's beautiful. So I'm curious then, how can people find out more about your book, more about your workshops? You know, what's the one-stop shop for our formal, former colonel? <laughs> the, the book is called Write, W-R-I-T-E, Write to Influence. Uh, it's available online at Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, all of the online places. Many, many libraries carry it now. My website is Right to www right to influence dot net n e t and and they can email me at Carla C A R L A at right to influence dot n e t dot net. Um, Wonderful. Well, thank yeah, you this, so this much. Yeah, this stuff works wonders. It, it yeah. really does. It sounds it sounds very interesting. I mean, I as a a student of writing and a writer myself, um, and I and I tend to. Uh, air on the side of writing fiction, which still encourages a lot of fluff. So I bet there's definitely an art to being succinct 
and um, and adding the influential part in there. I might have to go get your book myself. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, on my webpage, I have a media page there. I would I would refer your 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 audience to that also. Uh, it's basically a virtual li well, it is a virtual library, no pun intended, of of the uh, the articles that I've written that have been published in in a multitude of venues. So if you want to do a deep dive on the thank you notes or or how do you write uh, provide input to your own performance review, which is really really hard for some people. Uh, there is podcast, radio, TV, all sorts of interviews, all sorts of information there as well. A lot of that is additive to the book. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us this afternoon. I really appreciate um, that the, so much work that you've put into writing these books for everyone. And I look forward to hearing about the next up and coming All right. Well, thank you. Thank um, you, Jackie. I really, it was nice I to meet really you. appreciate this opportunity. All right. Well, we'll stay in Good touch. Bye-bye.